Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm joined today by my friend Zach. Zachy, we call him occasionally. I don't know what he prefers. We might be insulting him every single time uh, by, by calling him the... I, I, work, I work with a Mitchell that hates being called Mitch. And <laughs> Mitch from my Zero Hour Drummer uh, hated being called Mitchell. Oh. So I had to unteach myself to like not do that. I always feel when I'm talking to Mitchell, who's one of the glass blowers at work, I always feel like I'm being smarmy to him because it, I did it to our drummer Mitch on purpose to piss him off. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> but actually I've, I've come to, I've come to terms with it because it, it feels good to do the right thing for someone while secretly feeling like you're being a dick. So just everybody wins, yeah. you know, like you get to feel like you're, you're pushing someone's buttons. And in fact, you're just pushing their happy button. Cause <laughs> that's people call him Mitch a lot. And he says he, he doesn't, he doesn't like it. So I, I, I do my best to remember, but anyway, yeah, whichever it is that you go by, I, don't care. I know you don't. That's <laughs> why it's funny. Zach also brought, brought me my, my favorite beer and I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't ask for it. He just knew. Is it because he's seen it on the podcast? Is it because it was the one that was there <laughs> or was it, was it just fate? I don't really know. <laughs> Um, and Zach is, is not not a huge a huge drinker of beer. However, we have drank in a lot of booze together in the past. Yeah, and I think like I think that's what I want to talk about because there's there's like things in the news. You know, obviously, whenever we have to talk about aliens, I usually have Chris come on and help me sort that out. You know, uh, you know, him and I share a love of like I don't believe any or or like the people that promote conspiracy theories, but I miss. The old, like, 90s Joe Rogan style, you know, just like Bigfooted aliens. And back when it was cute, you know, like before <laughs> before it seems to start to be used as a way to unravel the fabric of society. Yeah. Like, you know, it was like, oh, it's just kind of fun just being like, just being high and talking about UFOs and like, oh, this is, this is, this is what happened in Project Paperclip. And then, and then some of those things were true. It's like, oh, yeah, NASA was full of ex Nazi scientists or probably still Nazi scientists like Werner von Braun and stuff like you know they all had dueling scars and things and I'm just like oh my god like that really happened like yeah and a bunch of stuff really happened lots of terrible things happen all the time but um you know a lot of conspiracy theories are just really dumb like chemtrails and things it's like okay the the food you're eating is definitely making you fucking very sick uh I don't know about the airplane streaks across the sky I think that's probably nothing I don't think there needs to be fluoride in the water to control you. I think you're already dumb as a box of hammers and you're just eating stuff that's like clogging up your brain even worse. Yeah. You know, it's like, why put in all that effort? I always said that like they would never put tracking chips in us. They would just sell us something that, that yeah, and that's, Zach, Zach held up his phone. There was even, uh, there was a commercial for not just that. They were selling the idea. I don't know if you remember this. I swear it was like, I don't remember if it was Boost Mobile or something like that, but it was one of those really awkward commercials where they were like, oh, we have to, we're going to promote this to the urban market. And, you know, <laughs> like that's how they say it in the meetings. It's just all, it's all black people and it's just corny and weird. You know, it's like a McDonald's commercial from the 70s. You know what I mean? When they just be like, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna stop at mcdonald's before you go to church and like grandma's all happy about it. it's like nobody's nobody's grandma is happy that we're <laughs> bringing the kids to make a mess of their nice clothes at mcdonald's before church like oh we're gonna eat something afterwards and we're gonna eat it at home as a family it's like nobody was was doing that and it was just awkward fake kind of like well anyway this phone commercial was just like had uh, god was it boost mobile I, it doesn't matter but they were like before everyone's phone was kind of like keeping track of them it was one of the early ones where you can see where all your friends are at like well where are you at well where are you at and there was like a little dot where it showed where they were and i'm like i don't even understand why anyone it's like a feature nobody likes it just exists currently on everything yeah. but it's like yeah like now you can't lie to your wife anymore and be like oh hang on a second like wait <laughs> i don't i don't think i want this and but it was just i, I only saw those like really awkward commercials where they're just they're just marketing it to like black people in this really uncomfortable sort of like you like you you like this right yeah everybody you know it's like uh do wait hang on a second do we <laughs> like why why is that such a thing with that oh yeah please put tracking devices in us you've been wanting to do that for oh i don't know 400 years <laughs> yeah let's just get real excited about it now like it was bizarre and then yeah but then just like it didn't really matter if anyone liked it or not it eventually just became part of the thing everybody buys and like doesn't care about anymore and i'll admit that i don't care yeah like what yeah I, where am i gonna be actually it's fucking great because you know how easy it would be to like commit a murder now and get away with it by just like 
putting like leaving your phone at home and just put it you know, like just just get map quest directions from the library you know to the person's <laughs> house and like post have pictures scheduled to like go up online of like you and you know maybe your wife's in on it or whatever yeah. it's like yeah that's me you know and it's like you know, I just she takes like a, another guy that has, has a beard and glasses and a sport coat out on a date and like so it's just like we're, oh they were at this oh that, yeah I think that's him like whatever and it's like yeah there's a picture on Instagram of it like and it's like well yeah I mean there's all this weird evidence pointing to like yeah John definitely had a beef with this person and like talked about killing them a few times but I don't know his phone was just at home that's how we catch everybody there's no way he could have done this what was he just gonna get in his car with no phone and remember how to get somewhere it's fucking impossible. <laughs> Like, was he gonna use a use a use a gun that, that isn't in his name whatsoever? That was just <laughs> lying around in his house for the past eight years. Like, that's, what is that? Yeah, it's like it's now that everyone is tracked so well. If you just if you just stop using whatever it is, then you could just go do crimes. Like, because yeah. they're like, well, yeah, I, I, yep, his phone wasn't there, so he probably didn't do it. He wasn't online bragging about how he did it like later that night, like everyone that gets arrested by the ATF around here. Like, so clearly he's not a criminal. He was just at home watching The Circle on Netflix with his wife. Um, but so I, I wanted to reminisce with with you a little bit about um, see, Zach and I used to live together in a scary house in, in a way scarier part of North Minneapolis. We're technically in North Minneapolis now, but this is like Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Like, we lived where there was, like, constant gunfire. <laughs> yeah. And hardly any of it was me on the roof, though some of it was once. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was before you lived there. I shouldn't be admitting <laughs> to any of that, so I won't tell that story. <laughs> but um, I decided to send a bit, of a, a bit of a message. And I was kind of like way more fucked up back then than i am now like this is this is old man wheeler this is just beer and snort a little adderall john this isn't <laughs> this isn't smoking crack with figgles and and and, and, and and driving a car into a lake or anything um but yeah zach zach lived with me in the infamous house in north minneapolis that was owned by notorious local mobster bobby Olson, <laughs> who has a different last name now and huh. yeah, I ran into him somewhere. I think it was at the caboose because he, I don't know if he owns the whole caboose now or something or part of it. He owned yeah. like the Whiskey Junction or whatever that was, the smaller venue. But yeah, something is he like had a kid and he's like, he goes by his like mother's maiden name now, like fucking Hitler. And uh, he, he was like, yeah, it's actually Bobby blah, blah, blah now. And I was like, oh, they finally starting to catch up with you, huh? And he, he gave me a weirdly awkward like... Like, oh, I was just kind of joking, but like that thing where you're making fun and you accidentally get it right, and it kind of <laughs> freaks people out a little bit. Like, wait, does John actually know about this? Because maybe I would. I don't know. Like, I uh, Alexis did this once. We went to a went to a party with these two people we knew, but the, we when we showed up, the guy was not there, and the lady was just there, and we were just like, well, isn't it also his birthday and the Fourth of July? Like, where would where? Did, where? Alexis was like, yeah, what is he in jail? And she was just like, yeah. No, yeah, he totally was. Like, when she got her random make fun of you guess was a hundred percent right, and it was very, it was, uh, it was very uncomfortable. And then, yeah, I, I threw a lot of fireworks in the street that day. But anyway, so uh, yeah, you lived, you lived in that horrifying house with me. And I do. There's this one story that I tell a lot, and it's about how you found like, like a giant box of liquor bottles that were like two thirds full in your grandma's basement or something like that. <laughs> And we were drinking, like... Some of that was, like, 30 years old. Like, yeah. Brand new Phillips plastic bottle. That's the thing. I think the, the the fun part of the story is, remember, the Phillips ended up being good. And we were yeah. like, oh, it's because it, like, aged for 30 years. But I didn't think shitty vodka could get better by sitting... It got great. Yeah, it was, like, the best you know, vodka I've ever had in my life. It was, like, Because of that, when I make Bloody Marys, I only use Phillips. But they, they can't be as good as that was now. You know, though. it's not, but, like... <laughs> I just still think of that. You can really taste the plastic in this plastic jug <laughs> vodka. Like, every... Uh. Yeah, that's the other thing, too. It wasn't... It, no, it wasn't a glass bottle, though, wasn't it? It was a plastic bottle. Was it really? It was a brand new plastic bottle. Oh, my God, that's right. Yeah, it was from, like, 1985 or something. Yeah. It said on it, like... That was just so incredible. And I think you were telling me that your grandma was a big drinker of, like... Was it brandy and Mountain Dew or something weird like that? Different grandma, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was just no, oh, that was five star brandy and Mountain Dew. Yeah, but it was brandy and Mountain Dew. That yeah. is a fucking unhinged combination <laughs> of like, because ah, uh, yeah, it's just got to be so sweet. Although I do remember, God, who the hell was telling me this story? It was like someone was mixing like Southern Comfort with like, which is kind of a brandy, isn't it? But it's like a sweet. I don't even know. What the hell is Southern Comfort? I don't know. It's not good. No, it is not good. And it was like, or I think my dad told me someone was like mixing it with eggnog once and he actually just <laughs> threw up after drinking, like not from getting sick from drinking, but from like, yeah. drinking. just like, oh, it was like, and he was like fully back before me, like in his party years. And he was just, someone was like making that and he just like immediately like reflexively barfed. And I mean, I've seen my dad eat everything that there is like and mostly be fine like you know he could keep keep i don't know if he even keeps up is the right word i think he actually laps me sometimes as far as drinking but it, you know like he's almost 70 which is yeah. pretty impressive and one thing i gotta tip and they watch this sometimes so i had to tip my hat to my dad he's, he's like yeah we'll have a few beers i like to finish it with like a glass or two of wild turkey it's <laughs> like while we're hanging out or whatever and i'm like yeah i'm gonna drive home on the sidewalk and Whatever. No, I pace myself visiting my dad, but but I'm like, God, kudos to you to still being in perfect health and never having actually hung it up. Like the way like everyone I know is like, ah, stop drinking. You know, I've scaled back. Like my day to day drinking is not like it was when I lived with you, where I was just, yeah. Oh my god. <clears throat> like I would just, I just kept. Uh, hard liquor, uh, dead bolted in my bedroom because like you know if I had beer in the fridge. We just drink it. So I'm like, go into my room and take a case of beer. Oh yeah, yeah. That guy would just steal everything. I and would like, hide it in like spots that no, nobody's gonna find this. And somehow he just like figure out this is the floorboard I need to open to find this case. Of see, beer. because he went and tried all of them. That's just what yeah. he would do. Like, I like the only thing that a and again this is another Figgle story. I had him come over and put a deadbolt on my door. I was like, it didn't even if you remember, it didn't even have a knob. Yeah. Like it just had the key goes in the deadbolt, and that's just like what opens it. It was like a hundred year old door too, so kicking it in wouldn't have been. I mean, if you spend all day, yeah, maybe. But I mean, like I was like that was like the minute I moved in, like no, like you're not going in here and rifling through my fucking shit. But I also like. I would leave it open sometimes, be not while I was ever gone, but while I was there, and I would, like, because I would have pointed things out to him, like, all the, you know, again, firearms that were, like, perhaps not registered to anyone living or me or whatever, and he'd be, like, kind of scared to get his fingerprints on things. <laughs> He's also one of the only people I've ever, like, actually pointed a... Well, no, that's not true. He's the only person I've ever pointed at that it didn't make horny. Um... <laughs> At least I don't think it did. But I, I did tell him that I had a, I had an unregistered handgun that technically belonged to him the minute I blew his head off and <laughs> put his fingerprints all over it and just was like, he's got felonies. He came at me. He's like, yeah, well, this, this guy, the serial number's filed off on it. This motherfucker. All right, well, you know, just... We'll see ya. You know, like, probably clean this up, I guess. Like, I was like, I, this is like the only person, but like, you realize I could just completely, like, I wouldn't have to put strychnine in your oatmeal. Like, I could just blow your head off with a 12 gauge and just nothing bad would happen to me. Like, I could just, like, lean out my window, like, in fucking, uh, um, what the hell, Last Action Hero, you know, and the guy, the bad guy lands in real life. You remember that movie where it was like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but he was like yeah. an action hero in a movie universe and comes into the real world. Well, like the Hans Gruber guy comes into the real world <laughs> and like just shoots somebody or whatever, because you know, normally the like police sirens will start up immediately or whatever. And, uh, he yells, I just shot somebody and I did it on purpose. <laughs> and then some guy's like, shut up down there. He's like, Oh, and he's like, it's easier being a bad guy in the real world. Anyway, I probably could have done that. And, <laughs> That was fun. What crazy times. But yeah, I kind of kept them out of my shit, you know, uh, which is the important thing. Yeah. And I wasn't, I probably never would murder anybody, but he came actually kind of close, at least to the point where I wanted him to very much know that it was on the table. You know, I was like, I think, I, I, I don't know. It's funny thing is I kind of liked hanging out with him, like, at first. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because, like, I just, living there made me shittier. Like, it was, because, I mean, I was paying what, $200 a month to live in this fucking broom closet in this weird ramshackle Victorian fight club house in North Minneapolis. But because of that, it's like my overhead was so low. There are, like, no responsibilities. That's, like, when I started going, like, I don't even know if I, you know, I could just 
do music videos and not work a real job and be fine. I, I was able to kind of do that with higher standards of living, like down the road. Uh, but you know, eventually, eventually, I just got a job because it's easier. But um, yeah, like I like my car broke one time, and it was like the, one of the earlier Priuses or whatever. So we're just like. Well, until I could just, like, get a battery source, because if, like, the dealership did it, it was, like, $6,000 or whatever, but you could just get one for 700 bucks. We had to wait for it yeah. to show up, and you and Ben had to almost get electrocuted, you know, <laughs> uh, because we were really drunk and we were switching it out. But, yeah, so I just, it was, like, late March, early April. It was one of those warm, I just remember all the grass was dead, and it's just, like, and he just found part of a bike somewhere and I was just like fixing it up in the backyard like trailer park boys so I could like ride it around and do stuff or whatever because I didn't have a car and like that was one of the famous times too and it's just like I decided not to go to something because each one of the three girls that offered to give me a ride to whatever it was weren't hot enough and he was like you're a piece of fucking shit and I'm like yeah but, you know, for a little while like being wallowing in, in one's own filth with someone was kind of fun yeah. You know, it's like there's no there's no repercussions or really any like and this was, this was great too because I was what like thirty four years old. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was really irresponsible in my younger days. <laughs> like in your mid thirties. <clears throat> you guys are just drinking fucking decades old aged Phillips and screaming into the night. Yeah. So when I moved in the grass was above my knees. Yeah. Um and the door, front door, I don't think was ever shut. No, it, it just was open all the time. I, I just looked it up, like, maybe a month ago, because I wanted to see if the house is still there. Yeah. It looks really nice. Well, they, the state bought it, or, or the city, or something. Oh. It's like a shelter now. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we wouldn't, we weren't supposed to be living there. See, all the other houses oh, yeah. were, when like, Section in, 8, whoever, like... This room that was didn't know that I was renting their room. Oh, there that was definitely part of it. <laughs> But I just mean the neighbors were all like, these are like halfway houses for like, no one just owns a house and lives like right here. Like it's not, not normal. And yeah, the grass was up to your fucking, well, because I was like, like Bobby asked me if I could do something about it. I'm like, look, I'm like subleasing this. This is either problem or yours or not. I mean, it's not mine. I'm not, I don't own a fucking lawnmower. I live here because it's $200 a month for like everything. Like the water, you know, like I'm, yeah, it, like. And I'm like, where am I going to put a lawnmower? Because when I had, I had that Prius that was so old that it wasn't even a hatchback. It was the weird ones that looked like a Ford Focus. It just had like a normal trunk. Yeah. It's like, I don't, how, like, I'm not an adult. If I was an adult, I'd like buy a house. Like I, <laughs> like I do now. And I mow the lawn here. And that's how it works. But like, yeah. And then, I don't know. I don't know if I helped find it or something happened. But he, it was like, it was amazing. He had to, he did finally mow the lawn that one time. And it, like, made the lawnmower kill, like, every fucking five minutes. So he was just out there just screaming, like, Tourette's dad, you know, just, ah, just, rah, rah, just pushing this thing through just fucking eight-foot-tall grass, just wrapping around the thing and just jamming up the lawnmower. And it took him, like, all day. It was so amazing. Yeah, he I went had... to work and he had been mowing. And when I got home, he was still mowing. I was just home all day, just kind of watching him. And I was like, mm-hmm. I was probably working on something upstairs, but it was just I could hear him yelling through the window and stuff. <laughs> he was just son of a fucking bitch, ah. and then that was it. I think the grass got mowed like once, just that one time. Yeah, yeah, because then it just took. Because I was there for a year, so I think it was like winter. So it was like the, you know the the snow kills the grass, then like it finally starts to grow. Then like it grow, you can let it go. It was like mid July. So we had a party there that one time. I don't remember if I you moved were... in right after that party. Okay, yeah, people were just standing around like in this long ass <laughs> grass, just like hey, there's like chicks and stuff. That was a time when I shot a wine bottle with a BB gun. It was like sitting on a garbage can next to the back steps where these chicks were smoking, and it just sprayed broken glass all over. Yeah, see, this... again, I don't tend to behave like this so much anymore, but like. It got all over them, and they were like, what the hell are you doing? And I was just like, I don't know, what did they ask me? Because the comeback was really funny. They were just like, you got broken glass all over us. And I was like, that was like a, I said it's something like that was like a long time ago. It's like, it was like a minute ago. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you got to move past things or <laughs> something. I just gave some fucking half-ass archer line. Because somebody had given me some weed tincture, and then this chick I was banging at the time showed up, and I was really drunk, and she had a bunch of Vicodin that we smashed up and we were, like, snorting or something. I don't quite remember. I was pretty out of it, and I was just like, hey, check this out. Just, <laughs> like, 
just shattered this bottle all over the place. Yeah, that's reckless. I can't fucking believe that I used to do things. Like, and again, I wasn't like 18. I was, I was like 35. That's so horrible. How old are you now? I'll be 32 next Saturday. Okay, so you're in, in your 30s. I can never figure out... I guess that makes you kind of way younger than me, because I'm currently 43. Uh, so yeah, I forget that like yeah, yeah. 30, 32 is much younger than I am. But um, If it makes you feel any better, when I saw you shoot that bottle and saw the long grass... This is where I want him. <laughs> yeah, you just want a, want a piece of the fucking hell. Yeah, because you would have been that you're late. I was 24. Yeah. Yeah, I just... I mean, it is great. I mean, why would you want to live with any kind of, you know, again, structure or responsibility? It's, right. it's ridiculous. You just you want to just be a fucking animal. And you would go with my zero to things sometimes because you were, you were dating our most famous member, Jace, for a while there. And, yeah, you came with to that Utterfest thing. We were talking about before the podcast started. We're like, I was blacked out before we went on stage. I thought we had only played, like, one song, <laughs> but we were done. And I was like, are we stopping because, like, I'm out of it? And we were like, no, you played, like, six or seven songs, whatever your normal thing was back then. I was like, oh, okay. Like, I couldn't remember it at all. We'd, it was one of those things where we just drank, like, do we think we got, like, two 30-packs of beer or something and just drank, like, from starting on the drive out there all the way to like yeah, back I, I would drive for all those that's right you were <laughs> you're driving us because wasn't that like your van we were yeah. using okay that's why yeah dave kind of had one later and then we just started taking separate cars it just didn't do as much shit but like yeah it was like my old shitty trailer that i just kind of like let jake have eventually i think it was so fucking beat up that it's like <laughs> we had that trailer was funny, too, because, like, we'd use that in SMB for, like, ever. Like, the thing had we would gotten its money's worth completely out of it. Like, I can't even believe, like, we never had a wheel fly off. Because, like, Jake would always talk about how, like, like, yeah, you know, you don't, if you don't you grease the wheel springs or the leaf springs or whatever, and it's, like, they get, it'll get really hot and whatever. It's, like, I had never maintained that thing in any way at all. Like, I had to, like, the electrical wiring got messed up, and I had to, like, strip new wires to put in there once i think because the thing that actually attached to like the brake light deal of the fucking vehicle was connected to was like fucked up and i fixed that once and that was it though like it, like i can't the amount of miles that we put on that thing we're just like the thing you should have had to have had to have done this full reconstructive maintenance at least like four times by now <laughs> Yeah. Who's that done anything to it? I'm like, I don't know anything about vehicles. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, and, and then that is the irony, too, that it's like Blue Felix, uh, pr prior to me joining, had had wheels fly off of way nicer, better maintained trailers like multiple times. Is that what Jake talked about? Oh, that it, um, it, yeah, it, it came off because it melted. Like the axle or whatever it was got yeah. so hot that the metal just turned into liquid. Yep. And it went flying into like a, like a, thing of grass by the freeway and it was dry and it just caught it all on fire <laughs> it caused this like wildfire from their wheel flying off I was like I can't believe that hadn't happened and then I rented it to City of the Week for like several hundred dollars a pot like, just for their tours and it's like okay like I've gotten back the I think twelve hundred dollars I paid for this like just by renting it to them after he had beaten it to fucking death at SMB somehow we're still using it for a little while like connecting it to your van yeah. and then it just like lived down at Jake's like I think I used it to move out of that the house uh, to live with Ryan Nelson in, in Bloomington for a while. Uh, and then I kind of think I brought it back down to Jake's and then like it kind of was just like, you can just have this. It was I think that's so... the one that we still use. It, but yeah, it probably it familiar is. familiar when I saw it. Yeah, it's just white with like two wheels, not yeah. the two on each side. Yeah, that that is probably my old trailer. Yeah. It was like so many pieces of it were like missing and it was just so beat up. But I'm like, again, like I just made it I made what I spent on it. And it was years prior, like, back and renting it. So it's just absolutely, if I ever need another trailer, I'm going to just buy a new one. Of course, I won't. Because yeah. I'm just never going to be doing anything that involves anything like that ever again. But yeah, you would you would drive my Zero around because we would just be too... Or I would be... Oh, yeah, yeah Dave was still kind of drinking. I still yeah. don't know. No, he would get pretty lit up. Because... We had learned in S and because he was only in like that later SMB that was way more like complicated metal stuff and it was still all the click tracks and everything. 
like he kind of got to where he would be like completely wall eyed, like like uh, and just blah, 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 just doing it all right. It was like in my zero was so much easier. Yeah. So we would just be fucking pissed drunk like all the time. <laughs> it just didn't matter. Like at a certain point, it just wasn't even fun anymore because it's like I think he quit. Yeah, he quit drinking while that band existed, and then he was like, "All right, I think I'm out." And I was like, "All right, that's fine." And then like I reined it in like a little. Just out of like, I shouldn't be the only one who's just utterly trashed like, up here. I think I still was like a few times or whatever. But all right, all right, Zachy, throw me, throw me a, a nugget of a story of a memory, because there's like a such a good chance that whatever it is is something I've completely like at least not talked about on here. Well, we talking about moving to Bloomington. Yeah. Every time I go through Bloomington, I think of parking lot chicken. Or Cub oh, Foods. every time I'm at a Cub Foods, I think of. Parking yeah, lot parking lot chicken. I was just explaining this to somebody like two days ago. That's right, and I still call it that. I almost forgot why. Like, yeah. what do you get? Okay, so parking lot chicken is when you know you go to Cub and you get that that weird like Kentucky Fried Chicken in the in the plastic thing in the deli section or whatever. But we were just eating it cold. <laughs> I think in the parking lot of another bar that sold food too, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, it was at uh, the shanty. Yeah, that's right, because you were at the shanty with us a couple of times, yeah. for sure. Because it was, yeah, it was within drunk driving distance of Ryan's house. <laughs> like, you could, compl- there was this weird, like, like bar that was like, okay, so there's like a Cub Foods. Oh, yeah, that's why we had the chicken, I think. There was like, like, it's, it, there's like this real part of town with like <clears throat> gas stations and Mexican restaurants and Cub Foods and everything. And then like behind the Cub, across a set of train tracks, just in this weird residential area, was this one bar called... Shanty town. It was like in the basement. It was, no, it was. We had to like go down. Oh, you might have had to gone down a step or two or something like that. But yeah, it was like an old building. It was like, and and uh, oh fuck, I can't tell. I shouldn't tell this part of the story. Ryan knew the lady that owned the place, and um, we were able to get away with like we shot like a pinwheel video in there for his old band like one time, and like we would just be like smoking weed up. Like it would be like two in the morning and they'd kick everyone else out she'd still kind of just be like pouring us drinks while we just like would like smoke her up like on the bar there'd be like a handful of other people in there and stuff that was the true beauty of the shanty town is it was just patty's pub sort of like because we kind of again we could we could get there from just total side streets from from where we live so it was like completely there is a bar like that here too it's not like this it's like really nice but it's also you know it's in an in an area that that we're just trying it's so hard to make a little bit better, like on Lindale, but there's a bar called the Camden Social that's like really, and like the people that own it are just wearing suits and they just they have a cigar bar. There's like a jazz trio playing during brunch and stuff, and it's like this really cool, really cool bar. And you can get there just by driving down the named street that we are on down into slightly lower numbers and then turn on one of those numbers and you just get into the back parking lot of it. Oh, nice. I didn't realize it went all the way through like that. I thought you had to go to Lindale and kind of be like, not that there's. Well, there's like a freeway entrance there. It's like there might be cops. They probably have bigger problems over there than, than me driving drunk. But like, but then I realized I'm like, oh no, you can just get there like the shanty. Like you can just kind of do 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 do. So you can be like, yeah, I'll have that third, you know, twelve dollar, you know, gin because definitely the drinks are those high end like craft cocktail, like really nice. But they're they're you're getting your buddy's worth out of them. And so like I would just go and get fucking loaded. Like speak yeah, speaking of Ben. Uh, he was hanging out with me a couple months ago and I was like, here, let's go to, let's, let's go over here. Oh yeah. I was getting rid of my old Prius and he was helping me fix something on it so I could get more money for it. But, um, and I was trying to decide whether or not I should buy the, buy the mini Cooper. And, but we, yeah, we rolled, we were just like, that was like the night I realized we could just side street it down to this place and we just got lit. And that bar is incredible because they're, the, the range of people that were in there. There was people that looked like uh, Danny DeVito when he was like the art critic on Always Sunny <laughs> and like an all all female biker biker gang with like leather vests and all that satanic stuff all over. It was just in there. It was like, where are all where, where all you people live around here? Like, it's definitely a very local type of bar. I don't know how many people go out of their way to go to the Camden Social. I mean, it's pretty cool. Like, maybe they do. But it's like, yeah, I guess it's just, just wild. But anyway, yeah, the Shanty, we knew the people that owned it yeah and that was why that could get so fucking out of control like we were never ever ever gonna get thrown out of there for acting like idiots ever whereas like yeah the candid social you might get like 
people that look like they're in like like Prince's gang in Purple Rain are gonna <laughs> put the fucking boots to out back if you act too silly. Which is why I like being there because I think everyone knows that. So it's yeah, it's pretty chill. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, you're gonna get worked over by a guy with like a fedora like cocked like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that's a that's a that's an old school beating that you don't you don't want any part of. Um, yeah, the, Shani was just like, we were there so often too. It's also that's also where I fired Jace. From the <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, there. I had her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I guess we should meet in a neutral location or whatever. But like. I don't know. It was, it was that one was kind of tricky too because I was like, I fire people from things like a bodily function. Like if I, I even like pulled like a Trent Reznor a few times where like like when I had that just say yes thing, I just kind of was like, I'm dissolving this, and then I just kind of <laughs> started it with different people like a week later. It was like, oh yeah, Joe just fired us all. I guess basically I'm like yeah, well it it was bothering me, but she wanted to not be fired so badly, and I was just like. This is just not happening. Like, you can't really play the guitar. I mean, that's sort of a problem. <laughs> also, you're absolutely kind of a, like a mess. <laughs> I don't know if she's any better now. and I have no idea. But uh, it was it was getting to be a bit of a thing for a little while there. So, like, we can't do this anymore. And then we had Eric Pelkovich join. And then for like a minute there, my zero was this absolute fucking machine. And then I just got tired of being in bands. <laughs> and, and broke the band up. Uh, like... It was like two weeks before COVID turned into a thing. It was in yeah. February of 2020. I just got everybody together. I'm like, I think I'm done, like, completely with this whole idea of doing this thing anymore. <laughs> like, it was like 39 or however. Yeah, probably. And, like, I bought this place a little while after the pandemic. Yeah, summer of 2020. I've been here for almost four years. But, yeah, like, it was... <sighs> The funny thing about my zero and, and that that whole thing is that it was like it was honestly like towards the end it had gotten like really good and I, but I just it was too late. I was like I don't want to <laughs> do this anymore. Like I don't want to go play like a VFW in Wisconsin or whatever. Like yeah, like this thing whenever we're like get to play at the Caboose or whatever. It sounds like a million bucks. Everyone's equipment's super nice. Everyone's really good at what they're doing and it's like you know okay. But then it's like the biggest thing we do is like open for OTEP. And that was the thing that just ruined my entire musical career because like they just decided that I was the one that must have been throwing shit at her when I was outside with the person who was accusing me of it, like at the time, <laughs> which is which is pretty incredible. Um, Brenda Peters, may she burn in hell. She's pretty rough on social media. I think she's fighting cancer. So, I mean, I know who I'm rooting for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have to do my own dirty work. I went over that earlier. I like bringing my phone everywhere I go, you know? And yeah. Why would I leave it at home? So, yeah, parking parking lot chicken was an immortal thing. The uh, if all, all you have to do to make Phillips better vodka is leave it there for 30 years is a thing. <laughs> um, fuck, what was that time when we all drove? Did we just drive down to Austin, Minnesota one time cause, to go be at like a bar yeah it wasn't for a show <laughs> there was no reason for it i don't know why we did it yeah i guess there was no bars right by where we lived because like yeah even i can say that i live in a slightly better part of north where we can drive on side streets down to a pretty cool bar and there's some other random weird ones too that are on like there's this one that i just call budweiser open because that's the only thing in the window and there's no fucking sign on the bar or anything. I think it's called like the tea something room or whatever. It's literally one of those like, it's like sitting like right here. It's just yeah. like the sports bar that it's like in the 40s somewhere over that way. And like, there's like a, like the pizza microwave is just sitting on the end of the bar by the wall or whatever. Like it's like, but it is just this amazing like dump if you want to like go drink somewhere in North Minneapolis and not go very far. But where we were, there was, like, you can't have businesses like that. Yeah. You know, I think our the whole thing that I was, do we go to BJ's or do we go to Austin, Minnesota? That's probably what it <laughs> it's was. It's not a Sunday, so we're not going to get the meat raffle. Yeah. Yeah, BJ's was still fucking open. And that, by the way, if you're, for for Minnesota, Minneapolis people, that was that, that weird strip club that was on, like, that was, like, Broadway in 94, like, the freeway exit or something yeah. like that. It closed now. And yeah, that was the thing. Like, and that was a hike too. Like, if you wanted to be like, oh, I'm gonna ride my bike to this so I can get loaded, 
you know, it was still a little bit of a ways. And I remember uh, 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 Aaron Zilch from from old school American Head Charge notoriety, like for one of their two's birthdays, like were at the house and then decided to like walk all the way over there. <laughs> and they said that like, actually this story is funny because they were like, there was two chicks dancing and one of them, one of them was exactly what you'd expect. And then the other one was like this fucking beautiful, like African gazelle with like leg muscles and stuff, you know, and like, um, who looked really mad that she was there. Like, <laughs> like she was like, like, I, this is not what I should be doing if I'm stripping on the side. And then later I, I have this friend that I probably shouldn't use her name for the story, but I have this, I have this friend that she does music and she was in a YouTube video I did that was a bit more produced. Um, that was, she did a good job. And uh, she kind of looks like that. And she told me the story that several years ago she got stuck because of somebody, I don't know if it was a manager or what it was, but like stripping at BJ's and there's just these two gross guys there. And I was like, that was you. <laughs> that was who they were describing as like a, like a, like 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 a hot chick from like a movie, but who's like it's like if like Lana Kane from Archer was actually stripping at like a thing. I'll bet you can guess who I'm uh, talking yeah. about. Okay, so yeah, and she was like, I didn't even tell her that I had the other end of that story. I just kind of <laughs> filed it away. I was just like, that was you. That is so. That was like five <laughs> years ago. Like weird. That, that, that it was just like, like they were like there was two girls there and one was hot and pissed and the other one was ugly and probably had fentanyl and didn't know what was happening and then she was just like yeah i got stuck here once and there's only two guys there and they're both these gross looking pieces of shit <laughs> like oh it's Aaron. like god, god knows how they were behaving at that place like i can't imagine it was like yeah politely but why you wouldn't go there to be on your manners i guess i've never been in i never it's gone i've never out. been in there we talked about going to the meat raffle yeah several times but yeah, and then we just drove all the way down to Austin, and there was like, we were having like an open streets thing. I swear to God, it was on like a Tuesday night or something. Like, yeah, it was. Because like I was like freelancing, and nobody's work schedule was very like nine to five year concrete. So we're like, oh, let's just go down here. Let's dr drive an hour away. <laughs> oh, yeah, didn't. Who threw up all over the car? Was that me? No. Or was that you? That or was that Jace. Jay? Okay, that was Jace. Because we like. Broccoli cheddar soup. Oh, yeah, we just got like gas station broccoli cheddar soup <laughs> to try to like, you know, ease the stomach of. Drinking a gallon of booze and then just barf it all. <laughs> oh, it didn't smell good going in. That and car would never smell right after. No, the, <laughs> I yeah, that would be a permanent fucking addition to any vehicle. I see. I forgot about the throwing up. See, this is where my memory memory <laughs> memory gets jogged. I remember you had a what did you have like a forty four revolver that you you kept it unloaded, but it was just to scare people. Yeah, it was something like that. Okay. I don't remember exactly what it was. <laughs> I love that you don't remember. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, and I don't know where it went. But it was like, yeah, that was the, I was, I keep, that's the one thing I don't have is a, is a fucking, like, a, I have a revolver, but I don't have a, I have a thirty eight revolver, but I don't have, like, a big Dick Tracy, like, yeah, it hurts to shoot, <laughs> like, like a, like a forty four or 45. My dad has a. Like from my grandpa, there came some some older older firearms that that are in in the old safe, and one of them is like a actual like the whole revolver the chambers don't come out. It's that thing where there's like a, just a hatch, and you go like one at a time, and it's just a just a Colt for it. It's like Yosemite Sam, <laughs> like something hundred tops. Yeah, I don't I don't even know if he's ever gone and shot. He's shot some of my you know, grandpa's old guns that he has, but I don't. I was like, that's probably not even like pleasant. <laughs> Like I fired a three fifty seven once and my wrist just hurt like after that because I was like it can't be that big of a difference or whatever and like no this is fucking I think David warned me even too he's like it's unpleasant I'm like what do you mean like I've I've shot bigger things than that it's like yeah but they're not designed to absorb like any of that it's like like AK forty seven I could like hold with one hand and go like shot 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 and it's like going like through trees and just Whoa! it's like the highest level but the thing is designed so none of that recoil it's, it's this chunk of metal just with an explosion coming out of it it's like there's visible like fucking damage to your like arm bones and stuff like but it'd still be it'd be cool to have something like that I don't know it's that old that old that old cowboy I got that. I got a little bit in me there. Yeah. Mm. 
So I did want to, I did want as far as as far as public. Will you grab me another one? Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, what do I want to say? Uh, yeah, we, we go we go over news stories occasionally, but um, you know, like like uh, when Vince McMahon was caught for sex trafficking. I don't know if you've watched the podcast. It, we really focus on the hard hitting issues, but uh, yeah, we came up at work today. But you know, it's been it's been a thing in Minneapolis for a while. We're like. Uber and Lyft are going away. Yeah. And I honestly find that I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, right. I, I fucking, like, honestly, like, because I live in Minneapolis and I only ever really use Uber to go elsewhere in Minneapolis, right? Like, if when I, now Chris gave me a ride, but when you were, when, when you were playing in, in the modern version of Blue Felix at the Studio B a little while ago, I was going to Uber down there. And I, even then, I remember being like, Oh, this, you know, this will be, uh, I better get it in while I can, I guess. It's going away. Ha ha ha. Yeah. And now we're actually like, st- now Chris ended up just picking me up because he'd be like, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go there and I, you know, he doesn't drink. So he's like, it'll be more fun to ride with somebody. And I'm like, that's mighty neighborly. And he had to come almost past here anyway to get, to get there. So, uh, it ended up working out, but I'm like, yeah, I got loaded when, when you were playing. Yeah. I saw you on the side of the stage. Yeah, I went. I, I went and picked up Joey uh, during yeah. during part of that, and because uh, he's light, you know, I'm an old man, but he's light enough where I could, I, could, oh, yeah. I could pick him up and spin around a little bit. And well, yeah, everybody gave me their drink. T- See, that's where it really went wrong. So it's like <laughs> Dave doesn't drink. Jake's not gonna drink drinks from the bar. If he's gonna drink at all, it's gonna be like Jagermeister or whatever. And it's like I don't even know if he does that anymore. But um, they both were just like, "Yeah, hey, you want." <laughs> It's like, I don't even think I got through all of them. I was just trying. No, there was some yagging back. But that might have been Joey's. Yeah, we had a bottle back there. Okay, all right, yeah. I remember, I definitely had some of that, too. I know that. Um, but, yeah, like, I was, like, Chris was getting the business on the ride home. Like, that was how, that was, that was like, that's not, if I had driven, that's not even like, oh, okay, John. We gotta be careful. That'd be more like I just drove right into a wall immediately. Or like <laughs> realistically, I would just be like, if I even thought about going back to my car, I'd be like, oh, I can't even do this. This yeah. is not. I'm just gonna. That would have done something stupid, like try to sleep in the back seat or whatever. Like, <laughs> you know, that would have been that would have been the thing. But yeah, that's how my like. I'm not cleaning my act up, and I don't want to drive drunk. But it's the unstoppable force against the immovable object. Like, what the fuck am I gonna do without a thing like Uber around? Call one of the fourteen cabs. Yeah. Yeah, we do have about 14 cabs. I even remember, like, because here's the thing with this whole fucking thing. Like, cabs were the worst thing in the world, and they still are. And they yeah. were all the way through, and they will be after this. Like, you would call them on the phone, and you'd have to, like, kind of, like, try to explain something to somebody who doesn't understand why you're calling them, even though that's what they, they're there for or whatever. Yeah. And, like, they just, like, might not show up. Like, yeah. was, that had happened before too. I'm like, well, it's been about cab. a half an hour. I guess we we're not getting one. The last time I called a cab, it was to a bar in St. Louis Park, and it took almost two hours to get there. Jesus, it's like the bar is about to close. I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's negative twenty outside. Fucking yeah, like, um, like I can't go back, and I, I do remember when like the rideshare things came out, just being like. Like I rolled my eyes at the like you're you're sharing a ride with like a person, see? So we're not a cab. It was like, oh, that's just one of those things where you don't want to pay for the right kinds of permits or whatever <laughs> the hell it is. Um, but but then when I when I realized like oh, but the thing about it is it's just a cab that you could like summon with your with a text message or whatever on your phone. You don't have to talk to anybody. But that's the, here's the crazy thing that. That was the first time that was possible, and that should never have been the case. Like, yeah. they should have just added that shit to regular cabs, like, the second it was possible. Like, we had been ordering pizza from Domino's on the internet even, like, before that. You know what I mean? Where you yeah. just didn't want to be like, hello, hi, how are you doing? Okay, like, blah, blah, blah. people are mishearing you. Whatever, you just push buttons on your computer, and, like, a pizza comes. And I'm like, okay, everyone, it, it's like when music companies didn't get into paid streaming right away. They just let Napster and shit completely <laughs> ruin their business permanently, like, or whatever, because they just didn't want to, like, ah, oh, we're not going to adapt to this. Like, they could have gotten out ahead of it a little bit. The cab companies could have, like, 
been like do we have to talk to like a sweaty guy with like with like no shirt on just smoking cigarettes inside like just <laughs> he's like oh yeah we can we can send somebody and we're like this is how this works like what the <laughs> fuck it was like 2016 and it was just that's the option i can't go back zacky yeah. i just fucking i just fucking can't do it and it's like only in minneapolis too no it's statewide I thought one of like one of them was, but like like Uber or Lyft was like only in the city itself. It might then. be that way. I know Uber is like statewide. Oh, it's fully statewide. Okay, because because I was like extra pissed. I was like I still could have been like living in Bloomington and then maybe gotten a ride somewhere. But like now it's like I live in this part of Minneapolis where it's like I could get an Uber to downtown to go to anything that I normally would have like made an excuse to not go to because I didn't want to deal with it. But like no, it's like. It's like a couple minutes and it's like six dollars. Like I would just be like, all right, or you know, twelve both ways or whatever. But yeah. But you know, it's part of the the joy of like living right here is like you can just get to that shit without having to deal with it. But I'm never gonna drive my car to anything like that. Yeah. Because I'm gonna have to like an Uber was cheaper than parking. Yeah. Like I'm fucking they really should have played. I would have paid one more dollar per ride if that's what we had to do. Like, I would have been a hundred percent fine with that. Everything else got more expensive. I wouldn't even have noticed. Yeah. It was like slightly my electric bill. Like, we've been like, you know, would leave the house for a month and it's still like two hundred dollars. Like, nothing was on. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? It's just how it is now. You know, like, okay, well then, yeah, I guess Uber gets a little more expensive and everybody goes along their merry way. I haven't talked to anybody that works for it that's been happy about this at all either. Yeah. It's like, well, we're doing it for you. It's like, I don't I don't know. Cause no one is like, oh yeah, that would have been great or whatever. Like the changing rules would have benefited anybody. Like I now I'm someone that wants everybody to get paid as much as they can and all the money should not be just going to like 10 people or whatever. Like yeah. that's all, that's all. Yeah. I, I got that Bernie Sanders idea in me, but the idea that like, yeah, but I think you were just doing stuff to go like, look at us. Like the, the Minneapolis city council is something else. Yeah. It's, so like, am I going to get paid minimum wage to sit at a club for eight hours? Yeah. When I got to play, or is that well? That's does that a, not count. That's the thing. I think everyone that made money off it was able to make a lot of money. Like our our, for, well, yeah, I don't think this is any kind of weird. Our, our Fred Figgles who drives for them was like he said something like he would basically just put in like one ten hour day and he'd be like like a week or something and he yeah. would just be all set. Like he's like that's all the money I need. Like yeah, and that's wild. Like because there's nothing I'm doing right now where I could do that now. I don't want to do that but i guess if i really didn't have to do anything else six days a week that might be kind of great like as luck would have it i, I kind of like what i do at work but uh, i mean yeah i don't i don't know who exactly that was for or their attempt like it's it's one of those things that sounds good and i, I as far as local politics goes like you know, I actually really like Tim Waltz, and I've noticed that he's kind of like a good barometer for whether or not something's actually a good idea. Like, because there's definitely been things that he's got a champion that were like great or whatever, including even the weed thing. You know, he's just like, just get it to my desk, like figure it out, and I'll sign it. And he just did right away. And the kids get school lunches, like yeah, that that makes perfect sense. We did that. Then this thing, he was like, uh, I don't know if this is that great of an idea, and it completely blew up in everyone. Face. I'm like, yeah, I think you might have been right about that. Where it's like, typically that dude seems to go for the 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 wins for the working man, and that's like, but you know, it's like he was balking at it even before I. Like that's all I knew about it was I heard some soundbite of of him being like, mm, I yeah. don't know if we should do this, and uh, fucking, and then it happened and everybody's pissed. Although I heard that they pushed it back. They pushed it back, yeah, to July first. July 1st? Yeah. Not even June 1st? <clears throat> yeah. Why is that? Do you have any idea? Well, it's 8,000 rides to the airport daily. What? what? Oh, the... Uber rides. Yeah. And well, I know, but they were going to... $2 million Uber lane. <laughs> but so, but wouldn't they just continue to operate then rather than, like, you know, oh, we pushed it back. Is it that they're hoping there's going to be some kind of resolution by then if they just waste more time or whatever? Um, like, I guess. I yeah. Yeah. I need I need hard hitting answers about this from you because your roommate <laughs> drives for them, uh, but yeah, we won't really know. 
I have a weird feeling that it's not really going to go away. Like, I know how he was like, oh, the office closed, you know, uh, but then it's like, yeah, but then when they go like, oh, we're going to push it back two months because there's all this money. It's like, well, wouldn't you just keep pushing it back forever then if that was the actual yeah. case, you know? I don't know. I just hate to be inconvenienced by things. Yeah. Just so, just so, so, so much. How's it been uh, playing in Bluefield? You guys have gone out of town a few times. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. I mean, we played maybe two shows in Minnesota. Yeah. Everything else has been out of state. Nice. Yeah. A little weekend run in June where it's like two of the shows are out of state. Mm. Well, you guys are doing Rockfest. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, Jake showed me, like, the the flyer before it was, like, all the way out. That was kind of funny. It was, like, a bunch of, like, to be announced or whatever. But I remember just, like, he was over here. We were kind of clowning on it. So we were just like, who the hell are these people? But I think it wasn't even, like, who the hell are these people? Like, oh, well, we're out of touch and those things are really big. I think it was, like, we knew what a lot of it was. We're like... These are your headliners for this thing? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? It was, like, Disturbed and Slipknot and Metallica, like, one, you know, year. Probably not Metallica. I don't know. Maybe they did it. No, they didn't. I don't think that was a thing. But it didn't matter. But it was just weird. Like, people always go. Yeah. My suspicion was just, though, that, like, they were, like, pulling that promoter thing where it's like, all right, at this point, people just go to Rockfest to go to Rockfest. So we can, we can kind of cheap out on getting, like... They were playing its two live crew and Jelly Roll. Yeah, and those are things that like definitely two live crew is awesome. But I mean, who the who's lining up to go? It's like as an abstraction, I love the idea of two live crew. But who's like, oh well, yeah, like we're going to <laughs> Rockfest to see a rap act that hasn't really been a thing for like a really long time, other than like they definitely were the very famous for pissing off the like they were one of the reasons there has to be warnings on records or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, like Tipper, Tipper Gar and the PMRC, like the thing that Jello Biafra was always yelling about. I saw a thing where the, I think Tipper Gore was on, like not Jerry Springer, but one of those things, maybe a more upscale one, but it's definitely a daytime talk show and Jello Biafra was on it and it was like the early nineties or whatever. So there was no quick looking things up on the computer or anything. So this was amazing. He was wearing some ugly Doug, Doug Stanhope looking checkered suit or whatever. And like, uh, She'd be like, I never, I never, I never said that. I never blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, really? I, and he just had folded up newspapers, like, in all of his pockets. He's like, because I just happened to have it right here. And just pulls it out. There you are. Blah, 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 He just kept doing it, too. Like, just it kept being more, more folded up newspapers coming. Because, yeah, you couldn't just look on your phone. But, man, he came really prepared to <laughs> rub it in that lady's face. Uh, and, yeah, Two Life Crew was, like, they were, like, the big thing that, Caused, caused that, which probably also means it was mostly just racism. Yeah. <laughs> like, we might guess, be like, oh yeah, there's probably all kinds of nasty metal lyrics and stuff out there, but it was like, oh no, it's Two Live Crew because the kids are listening to Aw oh, Me So Horny. or I, th I think that was them, right? Aw oh, Me So Horny, and they had like the saxophone part in it. Do, 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 do. That was Two Live Crew. There was like a hot chick playing the saxophone on the beach. I remember that from the music video. Yeah. And that's all I remember from the music video. I don't even know what they were talking about. I'm sh I guess it was probably offensive, but <laughs> isn't everything? I don't know. That had to have just been like, like the, the more, the more time goes by and the more I learn about stuff, it's just like nobody, like I know nobody really cares about what they're saying. Like there's always an agenda, you know, it's like with like abortion or whatever. It's like, no, but you're not trying to save babies. You just want to make sure the bottom doesn't fall out of the Ponzi scheme that our fucking <laughs> constant growth based economy. Like, yeah, I see what I, the people on the ground floor believe it because they just follow whatever's going on. Yeah. But everybody who's like pushing it doesn't have any idea. And it's like, but so many things. It's like, yeah, no one actually really cares about the sensitive ears of their children. They just don't want, they was like, oh, we don't want. The, like a way for black people to get like who come from an inner city to be able to get rich and famous or whatever it's like we just hate that idea so it's like well now we got to start censoring records or something like it probably has everything to do with that and not with anything they were saying it was about because nothing fucking ever is it is always just some kind of weird other thing and it comes like uh, you know i as someone who is not racist, I, I, can, I can usually like 
piece together the logic of it. Okay, well, I guess. But some of the shit like that, we're like, I don't even know really like what the concern with that is. Like, what? Like, okay, let's just say you're a weird, waspy, old, old money, rich, racist white people, and you just don't want like. But it's like the kind of thing where if you, if you did nothing about whatever it was, everything would just stay the exact same. Like, what are even even with like. Like, yeah, let these guys be famous rappers for a few years or, and then, you know, have a hit and fade into obscurity like everybody else with music. You know, it's like, what? And you meddling with it definitely only made all of that way more popular. Oh, like, yeah. I would just buy CDs based off of there being the parental warning on it. You know, be like, oh, sweet. And I don't think anybody in a store ever, like, ID'd me when I was, like, 15 and just buying, like, Antichrist Superstar from Target or whatever. Like, yeah. when, the, <laughs> like when the day it came out. Like, did any of that actually, like, have any effect on anything? Like, I I don't know. Except for it made it so now we remember who 2 Life Crew is, when we probably would maybe by now be like, wait, who was that? You know, like, but they were at the center of all this controversy, so they have they still have a big enough career where they're headlining Rockfest in Wisconsin, where you will be playing with them. Yeah. That would be, didn't you, aren't you guys, you guys did get, like, a better spot, though. Like, I thought it was, like... Yeah, it's later in the day. Yeah, because, like, mostly... I had this joke for, for years, like every year. I would be like, oh, bust out your magnifying glasses. All the local bands are playing it right fast. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, was that a nuisance? Okay. There they are. But yeah, you guys actually have a venerable spot. Enough where maybe you could bother Two Life Crew. Yeah, it's late enough in the day that our light show may look cool. Ooh, that would be impressive for the summer because that takes it being pretty late. Yeah. Is that? Oh, yeah, is that whole... God, I'm sorry. I was so drunk. I know you guys had... I, there was a light show. But was it everything I was seeing on stage yours? Or was it like yes, a weird combination? Everything that was on stage was ours. Okay, so that was all you guys' <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is nicely elaborate. Yeah, our dude crushed it. So, Phil. Phil, okay. So is it... Is it a guy who you kind of like just rent out his services or like is that like or do you just have all those lights hanging around that's all, all his stuff oh okay, he okay. like built all that for us like made all the scenes every song was written. yeah yeah that was a i don't i don't know if, if it ever came to fruition but um uh, jake lacour called me a while ago and because he was he was trying to program uh midi dmx lighting and i was like Oh yeah, God. you've got a big day out of you, buddy. Like I, I broke it down like as good as I possibly could, but I was like, yeah, it's it's a, it is such a labor intensive thing. It, it's like I, I could probably figure out a better way to do it than I use because like SMB had a fully MIDI light show for yeah. a while, and that was the most idiotically run thing. Like because we're like the light show thing only worked with like PC. Like there was not another piece of software based at the time that used this USB to MIDI uh, DMX box that like went out from everything but the computer that ran everything was a Mac because we were using like uh, uh, what the hell was the main stage or whatever so it's like sending a lane of MIDI out to a different computer that we had to trick into thinking that it was like it worked like 40% of the time yeah like there was shows where it was like well this isn't happening after I spent three hours setting it up like <laughs> it was I feel like, yeah, having a dedicated person is definitely the way to do that. And I I made, like, a simple one with those lights that are sitting on my arcade machine over there when I was going to do my solo thing, and I actually, like... But I went more, like, I have, like, a light board with a MIDI in on it, and I'm like, okay, like, it's just a physical thing. Like, it's not, like, another computer that's going to, like, freak out on me all the time or yeah. whatever, like... Um, and then, yeah, I got to use it once. And then, <laughs> and then, and then I threw my... Threw my, my Gilligan hat on the ground and stomped on it after uh, it was going to open for Aesthetic Perfection. And the fucking bitch at the Amsterdam was like, hey, remember like eight years ago when you didn't throw anything at OTEP? Well, you're banned for that now forever from here. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, cool. It told me the day before. That's still affecting me. On purpose. Is it really? In, what's, in what way is that affecting you? With Blue Felix. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, because Blue who wasn't there... Like, nobody was there. Yeah, and nobody that's in that band now currently super wasn't there. Jake was literally out of town on, like, a camping trip. Yeah, that is the fucking... I was talking to Chris about it at work the other day, like, where he talked about how they they were going to play at the 7th Street, and the the thing got... 
they were like, oh, well, this happened, blah, 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 blah. And Chris said he'd, he'd never talked to, like, Eli from first to end. Like, he'd never actually had to, like, have a conversation with this guy. But he finally was like, okay, like, he's like, what's the problem? And they're like, well, Blue Felix was, was opening for OTEP, and, and did, which the, wasn't. Uh, and they did all this stuff, and he's and Chris just had to, he pulled the Jell-O-B off. He's like, well, I have the flyer right here, and Blue Felix's name isn't even on it. And the guy was like, oh. But the lady was really saying that it was you guys, and he's like, we weren't even on this show. Like, what the hell are you talking about? And then, so they were able to play at the 7th Street then or whatever. And it was like, I guess I, that cast enough doubt. You know, the truth was, is one of the guys that worked there, DJ Gunnarsson, was the... See, here's the thing. I don't know if I've ever... And I, th I think I may have said it on the podcast before, but I don't know if I said it to you. It's like, the reason that, that I'm banned from there is because OTEP made them sign a contract the club for extra security because everyone just throws shit at her and hates her and stuff yeah and uh they did pat downs with everybody <clears throat> and but it was like dj gunner said it was like a booking guy there was one of the people that snuck all the shit to throw in um because he was there before doors open you know working there so he didn't get like the pat down or whatever so basically the club would have gotten sued for breach of contract if they didn't pay, and they were like, we did our job, we did our job. The only way it could have been, uh, it would have had to have been the opening band sneaking in. So we got we got thrown under the bus in a, in a it's the only way it could have happened so that we don't get sued story. And they've, they're stuck to it for fucking years. They would let, like, My Zero played there again a little while later. And then they kind of, like, went back to it when it was just me going to do my stupid, weird <clears throat> techno ghost main thing or whatever I was trying to do there for a second. Like... It's like I won this like weird online band battle, and I like aesthetic perfection a lot. They're like a thing that I like. Yeah. And I was like, well, this is kind of cool. Maybe, maybe there's maybe something to sticking it out doing a little music. I'm not gonna be in a band anymore, but I'll do this. And then that happened. I'm just like, I fucking quit. This sucks. Like I'm just not gonna bother anymore. I don't know. Me and Eric Pelkovich are working on something, but there's no. I don't think there's any sort of plan to ever try to do it live. But I just don't have an excuse to do metal anymore. And he's like, I bought an eight string, so how about I play a bunch of riffs and you turn that into weird industrial metal? And I'm like, I can do that. Yeah. That's fun. That's a fun thing that I enjoy. But, yeah, well, music is shitty and dumb, <laughs> but at least I've made a lot of friends out along the way. And one, one of those friends is you. Oh, yeah. So thanks for coming over. Oh, yeah. To end the podcast, I always like to read a book or read a page. From this weird, awful book my parents gave me for Christmas, it's called Dear Asshole, 101 Tear Out Letters to the Morons Who Muck Up Your Life. <laughs> and it's like one of those dumb, like, gag gift-like things, but the thing is, is, as far as I could tell, this book, like, fell out of another dimension. It's like, me and Chris had a theory for a while that it was written by AI, but it came out in 2011. And, like, the shit on the back, it's like, like, when you write a band bio and you haven't really done anything... Like, I know I've read this on the podcast so many times, but it's Jillian and Michelle Madison have built a network of well-connected pop culture websites and podcasts, none named, which currently receive over 40 million page views per month and have been featured on thousands of professional sites and blogs, none named. <laughs> and it's something about pophangover.com and damn you autocorrect and foodnetworkhumor.com. Like, I don't know what the hell any of this <laughs> is. It's the most unfunny, like... It's like the comic strip Kathy, but it decided to be kind of edgy or something. Like, yeah. I don't understand how this is a thing. I did confront my parents about it, too, because I've been reading it on the podcast forever. And they're like, you're always making fun of that book. And I'm like, okay, did you get it because you thought that's what I would do? Or did you get it because you thought, like, it would actually be funny for me? Like, it's really not funny? Or do you know that that is kind of what makes it funny, you know, or whatever? And... I think the answer I got was like, it was just called Dear Asshole, so we just bought it for you. I'm like, okay. So I don't think there was any Machiavellian planning in there. Like, ooh, this is gonna, this is gonna give Judd something to chew on. And I've been reading a page a week. I mean, sometimes I forget to do the podcast for like a month. Occasionally I don't end up reading the book. I'm still like, I'm like maybe almost halfway through this yeah. thing. I have to like, I, I, every once in a while I think about stopping doing this because what's the point? Like, I kind of started podcasts and YouTube in the middle of, like COVID, you know, because like, well, what else am I gonna fucking do? But I kept doing it because like I do get people regularly watch this and listen to it and stuff at work, and that's weird. 
Um, but I'm like, I can maybe stop once I get to the end of this. That I might consider renaming the podcast or going into a different direction. Oh, also this book has tons of racism in it too. And it's classist as shit. <laughs> it's always like, dear asshole, you know, server who's not paying attention to bringing me my order. Quit hitting on the cook because he has dreadlocks or whatever. And I'm like, wow. You know, dear asshole grocery bagger. You know, it's like, yeah, just shit on those people. And then a lot of them do are like, dear asshole who didn't flush the toilet. Like, because these things are perforated. You're supposed to leave them these notes. And like, <laughs> Who is that for? Like, is there someone in your house that's not flushing the toilet? That's probably, like, your 10-year-old kid. You shouldn't call him. He probably is an asshole, but... Well, this thing happened. Let me scroll through this book. There's a page for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can just have a talk with him. But otherwise, what, are you going to leave it in the bathroom stall of a Walmart? That person's not coming back. What do you think? They're just, a, like, a regular <laughs> customer that just comes and shits on the wall? No, that's someone who, like, stopped because they're in a band or they're a truck driver. They'll be back in three months when they play the same city. Yeah, 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 who just diarrhea all over everything, <laughs> like, you know, or fucking use the toilet paper after that first wipe to draw some <laughs> obscene thing on the thing, which I've done, which is kind of funny. <laughs> like, nothing, nothing's worse than seeing a pentagram or a frowny <laughs> face or a swastika made of shit. Just on a Walmart wall. That, you know, that's like an Andy Warhol level of, you know, just art. <laughs> you know, it's like you might not believe in any of those symbols you're drawing, but seeing whatever that is made out of poop is just going to ruin someone's day worse <laughs> than just the poop being there, you know, or just the obscene thing being written. It's both. It's really saying something. <laughs> like Ogo Gablosian would have wanted. Okay. So anyway, yeah, that this book is just A, pointless, B, Stupid, C, kind of racist, and D, it's also, oh, by the way, it's not funny at all. Like, it, it's supposed to be. The one time me and Mer Meredith, was, who sometimes co host the podcast with me, we like spent about three minutes punching up. Like, what we, what we thought would go better in the thing was like a million times funnier, and we spent like no time on it. Like, we're like, well, what if they said this instead of this? That would have been funny. <laughs> See, that would have been blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, now I don't read ahead, so I have no idea. I do know that I already read this one. Oh, yeah, this one's new. Um, like, two of these pages was actually pretty funny. Yeah. And that surprised me. I had to eat my words. I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, actually pretty hilarious. And that's what I think I realized. They probably came up with about five of these, and then their their dad, who works in the publishing company, you know, is like, it's a hun it's 101 penis jokes, it's 101 dog farts, you know, it's 101. You got to come up with 100, so you got 97 more, ladies. Like, come on. <laughs> And it's just all filler. So it's like those ones were probably the first ones they wrote. And they're like, oh, this, is, this was kind of funny. And then, nope, now you got to make a whole book out of it. Yeah. This one's called Dear Asshole Celebrity. Okay, again, it's 2011. Uh, I, there's an internet, but I don't know. What are you, like, pushing this to the TV screen? How are they going to read this? Where does this note go? <laughs> unless, unless it's about meeting him at a meet and greet or something. Let's find out. Okay. Dear asshole celebrity, no, I'm not writing for your autograph. Or we, oh, so you send it in the mail to these ones. Why not write your own nasty, threatening letter to a celebrity? You know, it's like make your own death threats. Like just be, you know, send a send a, like some of your fingernails and like a severed toe and hair and 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 you know do do the thing if you're gonna do it. Okay, I guess you're just sending him a page out of this fucking book. But no, I'm not waiting for your autograph or to request an 8x10 glossy photo of your bloated head. I really just wanted to call you an asshole. Okay. This, is, this sounds like it was written by Wesley Willis. <laughs> wow, you... <laughs> I do not want a glossy photo of your bloated head. I really just wanted to call you an asshole. Um, that would be... Oh, that's a book I would read, but too bad he's, he's dead. Um... Wow, you're famous and people know your name. That doesn't give you an all-access pass to act like an egotistical douchebag. Actually, it does. That's what fame is. Okay, like, money gets you a lot of things. Actually, being famous for all of its drawbacks is how you can get away with things that even people with as much money as you can't get away with, you know? Yeah. Like, at least back in the good old days. I think we all, I think people get in trouble for things now. But not 2011. Everyone was still Cosbying it up out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the clip. All right. Um, whatever. So they think it doesn't doesn't let them be a douchebag. But um, who do you think you are, sashaying around town with your oversized cataract sunglasses and your entourage of thirsty, overweight men? I don't know who this is aimed at. Morph into a Kit Kat and give me a break. 
This is funny, funny shit. I'm sure a million people tell you how fabulous you are every day, but I'm not going to bow down to some loser who dropped out of high school and used to stock shelves at Woolworths. Again, like, they shit on working class people in this book so much that these are just spoiled brat fucks who just... The, the, the Food Network, Huber.com, our dad helped us set that up. <laughs> uh, ugh. Um, just because some Hollywood asshole thought you had the look. Yeah, you have the look all right. The look of someone who belongs in rehab. That's all right. That one was all right. That was an okay goof. Um, Arrivederci, I think. I don't know if that's even spelled right. P.S. I hear Ju Julia Roberts hates you. Okay. So this is like clearly directed at like someone in particular, but they don't have yeah. the they don't have the balls to actually go like it's Kato Kalin or I or Kardashian. Who was even famous back then? I guess it was it was pretty reality show heavy back in the early two thousand tens. But I don't know. They just need to. I always like to throw this at the drums. <laughs> Uh, that drum set, by the way, is from, uh, I bought that in 1997. Nice. Um, and then I didn't have it for, like, a million years. Like, decades. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, Meredith was using it for her punk band, and then it got left in the parents' house of the, the bass player guy, who I, who I know still. And, like, it was just stashed there. For, like, that Rammstein stickers from when I saw them at First Avenue opening for KMFDM in, like, 1995. Like, that thing has just been... Some of those stickers are new, but that one's old. Anyway, yeah, both of his parents are dead, and they're cleaning out the house, and they're like, hey, do you, this is yours, technically. Do you want this? And I was almost like, no, but then Alexis was like, I could learn to play the drums, and I was like, all right. And so now it's back, and I bought it because... I mean, I can, I can hold down a four on the floor to a click track. I can play the March of the Pigs thing, actually fairly well but then my hips get tired because i don't play the drums right at all but i bought it just because we had a drummer at smb when it, when it was in its high school era um who was too broke to buy a drum set so it's like i'll just buy a 200 dollars at the time which i don't know in the 90s it's probably it's like 500 bucks still a cheap fucking drum set <laughs> and then i'll just have it and then you can play the drums on it and and and, and that'll be what we do uh, anyway, I, I appreciate you coming over and finally being on the podcast. Well, you were on Rum Dumpster, but that you know was three hours of hell yeah. every single time. Like this was. <laughs> I don't remember leaving that. Yeah, this is sort of coherent, and uh, you know, um, <clears throat> oh, I had I thought I had like a funny thing a funny thing to go out on, but oh yeah, th thank you for being one of the few drummers in my life to not be a complete piece of shit. <laughs> The Reverend John Wheeler Podcast takes zero responsibility for the words, actions, or ideas of its host, guests, or listeners. Though the people on the screen may at times be speaking directly to you and may occasionally give you direct calls to action, neither Reverend John nor the Alchemical Cocktail Lounge are under any moral or legal obligation to answer for the potentially disastrous repercussions that may arise if you are stupid enough to actually follow the orders of a raving lunatic. Think for yourself and do whatever you want because you're on your own. If anyone ever tries to sue this podcast, Podcast, black SUVs will converge on your location in the darkness of night and you will never be seen again. Remember to like and subscribe.